time to musk up. Wow. Again, today I want to talk about a fragrance that's one of my favorites, something that I would probably replenish once I ran out, and that is another, thir what the hell is it? Another 13. All right, this was a collaboration effort with Lulabo and a magazine called Another. I think the inspiration was to kind of smell like a magazine. And I think they kind of hit the nail on the head a little bit, sort of. But I'll go a little bit deeper into it. And uh, this was released in 2010 by Natalie Larson. Uh, there is 13 ingredients here. And so some people might say this isn't a fragrance. Uh, but I, I think it is obviously because the perfumer had to come up with this composition, uh, even though if it may seem like it's a incomplete composition, needless to say, but, uh, something I do want to mention, if you've smelt fragrances like Juliet has a gun, not a perfume, uh, this is just Ambroxan. I think specifically Cetalox, which is kind of this woody, ambery kind of smell. A little uh, animalic as well. Um, pretty unique, I would say. Not like a typical uh, woody amber. Uh, one that I actually do enjoy. I actually do like Ambroxan. I love ambergris, and so I guess that's not a surprise. Uh, I definitely pick up on a molecule of uh, Isoly Super. Right, so it has kind of similarities to that. And uh, something that I really think it's similar to, but this one is definitely more animalic. And this one they actually do call a fragrance enhancer. And that is I Don't Know What by Diaz and Durga. Now this one leans more on the kind of, uh, I think there's a Civitol is the note. It's a uh, synthetic civet note and this one is a lot more animalic and this has a blend of isoe super and broxin probably some amber woods uh things like that as well um not bad uh not my favorite but yeah it says fragrance enhancer but you could use it as a fragrance in all honesty uh and another thing I do want to say, what I really like about Lulabo fragrances is they almost have this kind of their own aesthetic as far as, uh, uh, let's say, a uh, Lulabo aid. And to me, it smells like a mixture of Isoe Super, Ambroxan, Incense, Musks. Uh, I get it in many of their releases, uh, some more than Sorry others. about that phone call. Anyways, where was I? Oh yeah, so I get it in some of their releases, uh, some more than others. Like I said, uh, Aldehyde 44, I pick it up in. Um, Musk 25, I pick it up in. And um, in Gaiac 10, I pick it up in. I also pick it up in Tonka uh, 25, I think it's called. And uh, some of their other releases. Uh, this aesthetic, uh, I think, Byredo uh, also does as well, this kind of industrial, uh, incomplete kind of aesthetic. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna put some of the notes up. It's kind of confusing because some websites have different notes, but I'm gonna let you know what I pick up mostly. And when you first spray this on, give it a minute before you kind of smell it because you're gonna get blasted with perfumer's alcohol. <laughs> and a lot of people in the beginning are going, are, are going to say things like, um, uh, band-aids well not band-aids uh, paint thinner uh, nail polish uh, kind of this like wood lacquer uh, that you're picking up from this it's it's kind of it's weird but it's I don't know why it's just heavenly for some reason and just a huge combination of ambroxan mainly very metallic soapy powdery um, musky definitely some ambrette seed in here almost kind of like this uh, alcohol liqueur kind of drink almost like kind of like vodka very cold 
definitely some uh, some fruity aspects here. I definitely pick up a hint of a of a pear, uh, but not much. Honestly, if it it says it in the notes, but if you didn't tell me, I probably wouldn't have said pear. But I definitely pick up on a fruitiness here, and and Brett can do that. Besides being kind of musky and almost seedy, the the fragrance overall kind of smells very oily kind of like a serum like a concentrated serum like olive oil that concentration it's not loud it doesn't project much uh, but when people do smell it it's not overpowering for some reason i once sprayed this on and because this fragrance is kind of sometimes it's hard to smell because that's what embroxin does it disappears it comes back disappears comes back but other people can smell it and people from like across the room at parties could like smell this stuff and they all enjoyed what they would uh what they were smelling and one thing i do want to say what this fragrance is really really similar to is a release from 2015 by francis kirkjohn and that is baccarat rouge 540 and i basically call this the baccarat rouge 540 pour homme just take out the cotton candy sweetness from Baccarat Rouge 540 and it's almost, it's basically another 13 is what you get here. Um, this is okay. I kind of get a little tired of it when it's on my skin, but, um, and I do think it leans a little bit on the feminine side. And so if any guys have any issues with that, I think if you try this, you would enjoy this. It'd almost be perfect. Uh, Kind of like gifts to uh, your significant other you give your girlfriend a bottle of this and a girlfriend gives the boyfriend a bottle of this um i mean yeah it's, it's just absolutely gorgeous it just has this like magic to it i don't know it's really weird sometimes when people do pick up this smell i'm not into compliments but i don't care for any of that you're not going to see me make a compliment list, but if I ever did, or if I ever, well, my list would be one, and it's mainly this. It's definitely not going to be for everybody. I would definitely say uh, sample this. Do not blind buy it. Uh, fortunately, Lalabo is easy to sample because it's in a decent amount of stores, uh, especially if you live on the uh, western and eastern coast. I know there's some in Texas. It's just something that I really personally enjoy. Like I said, I would probably replenish when I would run out. And yeah, another 13. This musky ghost-like aura that this fragrance has. My God, what is that smell? <coughs> oh. That's the smell of desire, my lady. 